Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. Today is going to be a very exciting video. I get to finally announce a brand new Unify console. And what is that console? That is the UDM Pro Max. The UDM Pro Max was teased at a trade show, the ICS West, as well as being shown at the Ubiquity World Conference in Chicago. So there were a few images out there on it. Ubiquity not only sent me one UDM Pro Max, but they sent me two. And why did they do that? Well, they're allowing us to show a alpha firmware that's going to show us true high availability with their shadow mode and this will be automated and that's what i'll be showing in this video as well now if you're looking to buy yourself a udm pro max i do have an affiliate link down in the description below if you'd like to hire me for network consulting visit my website at mactelecomnetworks.com now let's take a closer look at the udm pro max and this is the new udm pro max and we have two stacked on top of each other and this is the way that i'm going to have it in my rack the top one will be the primary and the bottom one will be the secondary for that shadow mode high availability the first thing that you notice is these have two drive bays and what that's going to be used for is unify protect in a raid one so if one hard drive fails the other one will pick up there in a mirror. I'm going to migrate my Unify Protect from my UMVR Pro to the UDM Pro Max. Now, like the UDM SE and the UDM Pro, we have these eight ports, but these eight ports don't have any power over Ethernet. The UDM Pro Max is geared towards large businesses that are going to eventually scale, and we could scale up to a large amount of devices. Not having PoE on those eight ports really isn't that big of a deal because you're going to have other PoE switches scattered throughout your environment. Port 9, we have a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet interface, and this is for our WAN connection. Then port 10 and port 11, those are both 10 gigabit per second. Now on the back of the Pro Max, just like the UDM Pro and the UDM SE, we have our RPS port, which I do have an RPS, and we're going to connect both these to it. And then we have our power input, which has the locking power supply. So they do give you the power cable that is able to lock into there. So all we need to do is place it in. Click the little tab over and then we shouldn't be able to pull this power supply out, which is a great feature with the Pro Max as well as the SE. Now, the only other thing that comes in the box is the rack gears as well as the mounting accessories, which Ubiquiti has always done a good job with. We will dive into specs a little later on in this video, but what I need to do, I need to put the rack gears on and then we need to put the hard drives into the UDM Pro Maxes and get them downstairs. I'm going to take a backup of my UDM SE. We're going to load it in and then hopefully all the applications move over. Now we're downstairs at my network rack and some of you may have already seen this rack previously, but I'll kind of explain what I have going on in this rack. At the top, we have two UDM SEs. The top one you can see is currently not powered. How they do shadow mode right now, you have to physically come and move some cables around, and I wasn't a huge fan of that. So I just left this one off as a cold spare if my primary ever did die. Below that, we have a Ubiquity patch panel. It's a 24 port patch panel. And then we have the USW Pro Max Ether Lighting Switch. My distribution switch is the Aggregation Pro Switch. And then we have the PDU and a bunch of different blank covers. So what we need to do, I'm going to power these two off and then we're going to rip them out and replace them with the new UDM Pro Max. and we've changed out the UDM SEs for the new UDM Pro Max and it was very easy to do. I do have rack studs in this rack so it was just a couple screw turns. But at the back we didn't need to run RPS cables or power cables because they were already plugged in from the UDM SE. Now with all the gear mounted we need to get this hooked up to the internet before we could do our initial adoption and then load our backup into the primary. So this top one will be our primary and this will be our secondary shadow console. I do have an RJ45 10 gigabit SFP adapter that I'm going to plug into port 10 up top. 
Now I'm gonna grab an ethernet cable. We're gonna plug it into port 24 on my patch panel because that is my uplink to my ISP modem and I'm gonna go and plug it into port 10. Now the last thing we need to do before we set this up is plug it into our LAN, which I have a DAC cable, 10 gigabit DAC, that I'm gonna plug into port 11. The bottom console we're not gonna worry about right now, we'll do that during our shadow mode setup but we need to go back to the computer and get this all up and running. All right, now we're at the initial setup and if you've never done this before, I'm just going to 192.168.1.1. That is my gateway address. You'd also type in unify forward slash or the easiest option of them all is to download the Unify Network app on your phone and then go through the initial wizard. The first step it says is Unify Dream Machine Pro Max setup and it's asking you to put in a name. After you put in a name, you would press next to go through the wizard. But since I'm loading from a backup, we're gonna say restore from backup. Now here it's asking us for our Ubiquiti single sign-on. And I'm gonna type that information in and it should find all of our backups. Now we can see a list of different backups and that's associated to your account.ui.com. At the very top, we have the Extremely Secret 2 and 1. These were the UDM Pro Maxes. I've been testing them for a little while but the one we want is the Mac Telecom SE. Now we can see the backup, it says April 17th, 2024 at 1040 AM. And that is this current date when I did the backup earlier today. And we're gonna wanna restore all applications and settings and then press next. Now it's restoring backup. Your console will be restored back to the April 17th at 1040. This may take a couple minutes. And now after about 10 minutes, we have Unify Network, Unify Access, Unify Interspace, the admins, Unify Protect, Unify Talk, and Unify OS settings all migrated over perfectly well without any issues. Now I'm gonna go to the dashboard. I ended up going to site manager to put it in dark mode so it's a little easier to see. But the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna rename this console. It's no longer the Mac Telecom SE. It is now the Pro Max. Now the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna migrate my Unify Protect from my UMVR Pro over to the UDM Pro Max. And how we do that, we're sitting on my UNVR Pro. We go over to the settings wheel. From the settings wheel, we go over to system and then we're gonna wanna download the migration file. Now with the migration file downloaded, we wanna go back to our UDM Pro Max and click on the protect controller. We're gonna go over to settings and then I'm gonna go to system and I'm gonna import the file. So we'll click import and then we'll grab onto the file and press open. It's asking, are you sure you want to import this backup? And I do, so we'll press import. Now the migration has finished and it did bring all my cameras over, which was great. Let's go into the system settings. Clicking onto the storage, we could see we have a configuration of RAID 1. And the reason we don't do a RAID 0 is because if our first drive fails, we have full protection on that second drive. And I'm gonna demonstrate that now by pulling out the first drive and we should still have that redundancy. Pull out the hard drive in the bay one and we could still see that we have the available storage of eight terabytes, but it says we recommend adding one more eight terabyte disk for basic storage protection. Now, if we go into our protect and look at the recordings, they still will be there. And as you can see, this is my backyard catio and we're still able to scroll through our footage even though that first hard drive was pulled out. You may have noticed that I put hard drives inside of the shadow console as well, but the shadow mode does not sync the protect footage. If we didn't have hard drives within the shadow console and the primary fails, we could always move those hard drives over. There would be continuity between the pre and post failure footage, but we would have to do some manual intervention. If we do have hard drives in our shadow console, it will do continuous recording if the primary fails, but there is no continuity between the pre and post failure footage. Now let's look at the specs of the Pro Max. For our memory, we have eight gigabytes. So that is four gigabyte higher than the UDM SE. And for our processor, we have the ARM 64-bit four core. And for the UDM SE, we have the ARM Cortex A57. Now, a couple other things about the UDM Pro Max is it comes in at $599 usd msrp which i think is a great price i initially thought that it would be about 800 dollars also the pro max is supposed to handle about 200 unified devices and 2000 clients whereas the udm se could only do 100 devices and 1000 clients now there's also been a significant upgrade to the ids and the ips performance so on the udm se if we have that on we could only do 3.5 gigabits per second but with the Pro Max, we can now do five gigabits per second, which is a great improvement. 
Unfortunately, at my house, I only have a 3 gig by 3 gig WAN connection, but we will do some testing out to a public iPerf server. Now we're going to set up shadow mode in the physical aspect of it. For our primary and our secondary, we need to make sure they're cabled the exact same. So my ISP connection is coming into WAN 2, which is our primary WAN. So that has an SFP plus 10 gigabit adapter. And on our secondary, we also have that. Now I will show the steps on the screen so that you can see what I'm doing and when I'm pressing next. The first thing we need to do, we need to get these consoles synced together. So I'm going to grab an ethernet cable. I'm going to plug it into port one of our primary, and then I'm going to plug it into port nine of our secondary. With this connected, our Unify network controller is going to detect that we have a shadow console and we could sync them together. We have four more steps to go through. Now that these are synced together, we need to get another ethernet cable and plug it into port seven of our primary and then port seven of our secondary. This cable is gonna be used for our high availability link. Now with the high availability cluster configured, we could remove this cable that's going between port one of the primary to port nine on the secondary. Then we need to grab another cable, plug it into where our ISP is connected, and then it's gonna go into this SFP plus connection, which will be my primary WAN. So I'm gonna remove this cable and then plug this one in. And now the last step that we need to do, we need to plug in the shadow console into our LAN network. So I'm using a 10 gigabit DAC cable and we'll plug it into the bottom of the shadow console on port 11. And then I'm gonna plug it into my aggregation switch. The cabling is a bit of a mess, but let me show you a close up of what's going on. Between both port seven of the primary and the shadow console, there is a cable connecting them. And this is for our high availability link. On the port 10 of my primary, this is going into my ISP, and then port 11 is going down to my aggregation switch. On the shadow console, port 10 is also going to my ISP, and then we have another 10 gigabit DAC on port 11 going down to my aggregation switch. So these are identical in cabling configuration. Now we need to go back to my computer. I'm gonna shut down the primary, and then we're gonna make sure that the secondary picks up. Now it's time to test if the automatic shadow mode works. So what I'm going to do, I have a command line open and I'm going to go ping google.com and dash T. Now with that done, we're going to go over to my Unify OS and we're going to go to the console settings and I'm going to shut down the primary console. We're just going to press shut down and we'll bring the command line back up and hopefully we shouldn't see too many ping timeouts. And there you have it. We only had three ping timeouts for that automatic high availability, which is amazing. You really wouldn't even notice that your internet went down. I'm really glad Ubiquity improved this and I'm sure everybody's going to love it when it does release to the general public. Now it's time for us to do some testing. As you can see, suspicious activity is currently off. We're going to run a speed test and an iPerf test over to a public iPerf server. But first we'll do the speed test. I'll open up a new tab and we'll go to wifiman.com. The results with the speed test with suspicious activities turned off was 3,087 down by 3,180 up. Now I'm gonna bring up the terminal and we'll do an iperf test to a public iperf server that does have a 10 gig connection. I now have the command in the terminal for the public iperf server. So all we need to do is press enter. And the results were 2.8 gigabits per second. This was with suspicious activity turned off and that is pretty close to what my internet ISP connection is. Now we need to go back into my UDM Pro Max and turn suspicious activity on. We need to click on advanced. And as you can see, we have a bunch of different networks in here. There is a warning. In case of reduced speeds or performance, decrease selected networks to three or less. There is a maximum of 10 networks that we could have suspicious activity on. I'm gonna delete it for pretty much all of them, except my default and Dolores. Now we're also gonna put notify and block on, and we're gonna put it on high with the dark web blocker and block known malicious IPs, and we'll apply the changes. Now with the suspicious activity turned on, I'm gonna press enter, and we're gonna see what we get from this iperf test. And from this test, we're getting 2.5 gigabits per second. When we had suspicious activity turned off, we we're getting 2.81. So it is a little bit less, but if I did have a five gigabit connection, I'm sure we would see a lot more throughput. 
Now let's do a Wi-Fi man speed test. Now from the Wi-Fi man speed test, we are getting 3,200 down and 3,170 up, which actually is a little bit better than when suspicious activity was turned off. And I'm really happy with those results. For my video on the UDM Pro Max, and who would this device be for? Well, I said it at the beginning of the video, but this would be for large businesses that are looking to scale and that are using multiple applications on this device. The UDM Pro Max could scale up to hundreds of unified devices and thousands of clients. So this really won't be for your home environment. Since the UDM Pro Max is meant for large scale deployments, it would be good to pair this with the professional phone support which is currently five days a week and you could get it 24 hours a day. They are going to be moving to 24 seven service and it's currently available in Canada in the United States. You'll have to go to the site manager to sign up and you'll be able to see the different pricing for your region. If you have any questions on the UDM Pro Max, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.